With the Gilchrist Sawmill reopened and under new management, the community morale is higher than ever. While the mill is starting production again, we hear from some professionals and employees about what the reopening means to Gilchrist and the state of Oregon. This is a really big deal uh, that this mill is reopening for many reasons. First, uh, the community of Gilchrist. Uh, it means jobs, it means economic activity in this small community. But I think if you look larger, it really means a lot for Central Oregon, uh, for our national forests in Central Oregon, and for the, the health of the forests on these public lands. The, the mill is an integral part of keeping these forests healthy because uh, activities like thinning, timber harvest, all provides wood to this mill to keep it open and to provide quality wood products. When we got word that somebody was gonna buy it, that was great. And then when we were told that Nyman's was gonna buy it and we were told, you know, go research Nyman's, it was even better because they were a lot like old Frank Gilchrist. And that brought a lot of a lot of smiles to everybody around here. I mean, it really did. And it, that's kind of how this community was built, was from uh, an employer that cared about the community and was, you know, based on caring about their employees first, worrying about the money later. And when you, when you have that kind of culture, it draws good people to come work for you. It was basically the community was one. We like that feel. We, we believe there is a, a, a excellent chance of this happening again. Um, will it all be just mill workers here or anything? No, because transportation's different and you know how that goes. And mom's working in Lapine and dad's working in Gilchrist type of a deal or in Bend or whatever. Um, but everybody's, the talk, everybody's excited about it because they would like to um, have that feel again. Oh, well, when Rick, our store manager, was telling me about um, the Nyman family, and oh, I'm gonna tear up. I'm sorry. Um, family owned, and, and they've been into the store a number of times having uh, food at the deli breakfast, and then have had dinner down at the restaurants in Crescent and talking around and stuff. And he said, they're really down to earth. They're family owned. He says, it's like the Gilchrist family coming back. And it just, it just makes me proud. So, so to have a family run business that's in for the long term, you know, this isn't just a come in, cut, make your money and leave. This makes my heart swell. I'm just so happy to see that come back. If you look at the impacts of, of these mills, there's actually a fair amount of, of, of data on this economic data. Um, there's, there's the obvious direct impact, 150 employees and so forth. Uh, the ripple effect on that, you know, in, the, in these communities, particularly these smaller communities, these natural resource-based communities, is just tremendous. And so um, the, the loss, or, or in this case the reopening of a mill, is, uh, is tremendously important. And again, it's the direct uh, employment at the mill, but also the loggers and the inwoods employees, uh, you know, the truckers, the tree planters, so, you know, the whole cycle. But then it's all the support industries and, and, the, and the communities beyond. So it's hard to overstate the importance of keeping these mills alive. It's not just the reopening of the mill that has a big impact. It's what the future holds for Gilchrist and forest restoration that can be a stepping stone for Oregon. The mill, the opening of that mill or reopening of that mill is really, I can't tell you how, how important it is for um, Central Oregon and uh, perhaps even Eastern Oregon in general because we have seen a decline in our milling infrastructure. But as mills get further and further away, um, the cost of bringing logs, say 50 miles or 100 miles to that mill, then the value is eaten up by transportation costs. So if you are doing a thinning, 
of ponderosa pine to reduce the density to increase health and vigor, usually those are smaller diameter logs. And so it'd be one thing if you were cutting those trees right next to the mill, very short transportation costs. But if you're coming 100 miles away and mills are you know 100 to, to 150 miles apart, then that becomes much more marginal or it may actually cost you. And so to get the needed work done in a lot of our forests of central and eastern Oregon, which are too dense, um, and removing some of the smaller, less valuable uh, type of material, having those mills there is essential for um, getting the work done. So the mill provides a lot of opportunities to be able to provide an economic benefit for, for ecological reason. That ecologically we're trying to reduce density, improve resistance to bark beetles, wildfire, even create large old, older trees for the future, is that being able to bring um, excess trees out um, and process them in the mill and be used in a product is very, very important for both the economic and the ecological health. At the end of the day, a forest and a community is connected. For a lot of reasons, people recreate the forest, they play in it, they live in it, work in it, whatever way you use the forest. And so for a forest to be managed really in a good way, it needs community engagement. The more community engagement you get, the better result you're gonna get. And the Gilchrist Mill is part of the community. And so that just makes a ton of sense to me. If we lose that mill, uh, you know, it makes it much more difficult. You gotta go farther afield. We've lost most of our mills here already. And mills are, are a pretty endangered species. <laughs> But the, the, the real question is, what is the healthy balance? And, you know, we're gonna not have the number of mills, you know, that we had because that mass cutting thing is just not gonna, get, gonna come back. But there's always gonna be a certain amount that needs to get done. And the question is, what's the healthy balance? You know, as, as more and more people enjoy outdoor recreation, we're certainly going to have challenges, but I think if we can um, keep on our pace and scale of restoration, I think if we can continue to provide high quality recreation opportunities, um, continue to get stewards of, of the forest, whether they're outdoor recreationists or whether they're environmentalists or part of the, the logging industry, I think, I think that's where our future is. I think having all those connections and, and having all that understanding between people's different values and how they're interconnected. In our next episode, we take a look at how forest education can have a major impact on the restoration projects in Oregon and shed some light for the next generation of stewards of the land.